So in the search to figure out why Starfield is 30 FPS, a lot of people have basically resigned that if a game is not 60 FPS, they don't believe that the game is actually a good game. Some don't even want to hear reason from the critics in the industry who usually come after games and talk about their performance either being up to par or not. And some have finally eventually got some sense thanks to some developers who eventually talk to them and they've now come around. John Linneman of Digital Foundry is finding it hard to convince people on the internet that resolution does not necessarily mean that if you tweak it, you're going to get FPS all the time. In fact, he made a tweet here saying the discourse today has been interesting, to say the least. I think we'll need to help folks understand that console games can become bottleneck for a multitude of reasons unrelated to resolution. In fact, on Digital Foundry, if you go to their Digital Foundry YouTube page, there's a video that they have. Let's just type it out. Let me give you the search key terms. YouTube, Digital foundry dynamic resolution this is a video where they actually look very carefully into dynamic resolution when it started to first show up in like 2018 or so and a lot of games started to pick it up star season can you imagine that and a lot of games were using dynamic resolution to improve their frame rates and there was something really interesting that was said where they were talking about dynamic resolution and gears of war they said that sometimes dynamic resolution does not necessarily always help for FPS because for some reason, some games have some different parameters that they have to deal with. So I've seen people also ask about dynamic resolution, saying that that usually sometimes will come in and help FPS. But they admitted that even some games don't even pay attention to dynamic resolution games like Assassin's Creed Origins, which in some areas would have to basically scale down even the quality to be able to give you that FPS and so on and so forth. So the technical side, they're well versed in, but believe it or not, this person pretty much attacked John and called him a shill. Let's look at the conversation. They said the limiting factor is the engine. Look at the game. There's nothing to justify 30 FPS. Then he goes with the Horizon Forbidden West analogy. Oh, Horizon Forbidden West at 60 FPS with giant complex living machines. Oh, oh, oh. Bethesda should use ID Tech in a future Starfield game. John replies and says, resolution is not the limiting factor. It's probably CPU above all else. So even a 720p, it will be tough to reach 60 FPS, I'd imagine. Oh, this person goes back and said, insane that you guys think we believe such blatant lies. Bro, this person has probably never, ever picked up a pencil to even write the concept of how a video game should be designed. But somehow, some way. Anybody that tries to tell them from a technical side that this is probably not the case, they call them liars. Stop with the gaslighting. Are you trying to tell me, and I'm translating here, but their words, 4K 30 FPS equals 730 FPS? He never said that. <laughs> he never said that. He said it will be tough to reach 60 FPS. I'd imagine. He's not imagining. They, their channel made a video talking about dynamic resolution scaling, asking if it was a good fit for PC games. This is a video I'd recommend that everybody watch so that they can be very versed on the conversation on how resolution can pretty much affect game performance. Are you serious? Seriously, how much is Microsoft paying you guys? This person replied. So I guess they're starting to take, you know, a little bit of time now to maybe educate gamers more. Because remember, when he made the Gotham Knights technical analysis and talked about why there were some, you know, FPS drops in some areas of the game, even he had to acknowledge that those FPS drops were quite weird in a sense. But many video games experience FPS drops in specific areas. Sometimes VFX fire, sometimes the asset density is too much and the frame rates drop. In fact, have any of you seen the performance for Final Fantasy that just came out, the demo? Some people are starting to try to chalk it up to, oh, it's the demo build. Ladies and gentlemen, FPS drops happen the moment you leave 30 FPS or even within 30 FPS, depending on how ambitious your game is, you're going to see fire, thunder and lightning. Once AI, all kinds of different processes are running in your game, your UI, your logic, your code, all those things are taking up resources in your machine. So that's not just necessarily always easy. But Dreamcast guy basically went on that rant of, oh, Starfield's not finished. Thankfully, a Sony Santa Monica developer, a developer from a competing, uh, I said competitive, com from a competing, <laughs> from a competing studio, basically, pretty much had to tone him down and say, game dev here, by the way, big fan, wanted to clarify, it's not a sign of an unfinished game, it's a choice. 60 FPS on this scale would be a large hit to the visual fidelity. My guess is that they want to go for a seamless look and let's pop in. And of course, you're right to dislike the choice. 
Dreamcast guy eventually, the very next day, which is today, came around to say a lot of very nice developers have explained to me why Starfield is 30 FPS, and I take back my OMG, this game is unfinished take. I still wish the game was 60 FPS on consoles. You can wish it, but now I understand why it isn't, at least not yet. So apparently, maybe he eventually has had a change of mind. Maybe because some sense was talked into him, it's probably become something, you know, that everybody is now probably going back on. I mean, you see everybody saying things like, oh, it's nuts to see gamers demand a game that pushes scope and ambition when to get one through Starfield. They get pissed. It isn't like every other game. I was saying this during the days of Gotham Knights and people said to me, Gotham Knights is not doing anything special, but I've challenged every single one of them to go find me a game that has been developed, designed and deployed like Gotham Knights. And they still keep bringing me GTA 5, which is not a co-op game. You have to go on GTA Online, a separate different game to play co-op for a third person action game with vehicles. So bring me that game and let's see the comparison to Gotham Knights. Until then, these people are just basically making claims that I can't necessarily seem to wrap my mind around. This is not to say we're not going to see games like that that eventually come out and give you better performance. But the games that we're going to see are going to have to tone their skill and ambition down to be able to give you this 16 millisecond frame time that you're asking for in every single video game, which is highly unrealistic. If Starfield is supposed to be the biggest RPG, then by logic and by design and by everything scientific, we should expect an expense to be able to achieve that you know, ambition, the expense being the hardware. And we all know that the GPU that is actually inside of the PlayStation 5 and the Series X are somewhere around the, uh, you know, the, RT, the RX, the AMD Radeon, 6700 non-XT. That's the one that's actually closer in comparison to the PS5 GPU. But again, it is also an APU, but I don't necessarily know the one that's in the Xbox Series X, but both of them are APUs, which don't necessarily have a lot of the capabilities in terms of thermal control and so on and so forth that a regular GPU has. So this is why you'll see that even an older GPU sometimes in some games will run on parity with even your, you know, much newer in quote console GPUs. Even the CPUs still face their limitations because the CPUs in a console still have to carry out other tasks and other processes that usually a PC CPU would delegate much better than the game, like, you know, your console. So when you kind of start thinking about all of this stuff, you think about heat management, you think about your PlayStation basically recording in the background, you really have to tone down the scale of your video game in order for you to be able to get yourself a game that looks very good. I think Sony's marketing you know, tactics have been very effective. They basically put in a lot of visual quality in their hand-holding games. They're very semi-linear, in fact, heavily linear games that people just, in a sense, translate that to be the standard that every game ought to meet. If you don't like these games, you shouldn't play them. If you say because they're at 30 FPS, don't touch them because you're playing Zelda at 30 FPS, or at least you're condoning the fact that Zelda is going to be nominated for game of the year. And don't give me that Zelda's on a six-year-old machine because there are 60 FPS games on the Switch. And even Zelda itself does not stay at 30 FPS throughout the gameplay experience. So you don't even have a case there if you even wanted to go that route. Or maybe you think you do. Bring it up in the comment section. I'll be happy to counter and we can have that conversation later. Thankfully, people are starting to get some sense. <laughs> Thankfully, you know, some people are starting to maybe see the light. I mean, you're going to see a lot of bad faith actors that continue to cite this. Even when you present them with the evidence, like one of them was saying, oh, the Xbox, whatever, the PlayStation, no one cares about your console wars. We're talking the scientific and the technical aspect of game development versus the console machines that we have. And I think what people are afraid to be exposed is that these consoles are already kind of starting to be outdated. It's a little pain point, but it's a reality that must be taken a very, very close look at. If it's not taken a very close look at, People are just going to get out of hand and continue to think that these consoles are going to be the newest magic, but you're not necessarily that. Thanks for watching the video. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Peace out.